Greetings, uh, I'm Rob Frony, and I'm about to show you how to analyze operational amplifier circuits. The first circuit we're going to look at is known as the non-inverting amplifier. We're going to use some rules uh, that were uh, developed previously. First of all, because the input resistance of an ideal op amp is infinite, there's no current that enters the plus or minus inputs, the inverting or non-inverting input. The inverting input is the input right here that uh, has a minus by it, and the non-inverting input is the one up here with the plus by it. Um, then uh, the summing point constraint, just uh, finished doing a video about that. If you're curious about where that comes from, it comes from the block diagram uh, with feedback. And essentially the uh, result of that is that the output voltage drives the difference between the plus and minus inputs, the inverting and non-inverting inputs, to zero. And that's because the operational amplifier has such a large gain. In other words, V out is an enormous number times the voltage at the non-inverting terminal minus the voltage at the inverting terminal. So you take the difference of the voltages, those two terminals, multiply it by this enormous number, that's what comes out V out. So what happens when when that uh, when you got something coming out V out that's really positive, it makes the non-inverting terminal um, get bigger until it gets to the same voltage essentially as as the uh, non-inverting terminal, and uh, then you have a really really small number there that you're multiplying by this really uh, big uh, gain to get a reasonable output voltage, and if it overshoots it, if it uh, if uh, the voltage uh, at the inverting terminal gets bigger than the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, um, the sign on V out changes and it uh, brings it back. And that's known as negative feedback. And lastly, there's a hint. The hint is to write node equations at the input terminals, like the non-inverting and the inverting terminal, or one or the other. Sometimes uh, all you have to do is one. So um, let's follow those hints and those rules and analyze uh, this op amp circuit. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a, uh, a node equation right here at this point. Um, and so that uh, equation, um, I'm, I'm going for, first thing I'm trying to find is the output voltage over the input voltage. Um, which would be this um, A of V here, and uh, um, you know the the load resistor would would go on like this. Uh, it would be uh, connected right on here, and and then we'd uh, go down, and you'd have your load resistor right here, and so that's uh, how the load resistor connects on. And so this load resistor right here is the same as this load resistor here. This, this thing in the green box is the, uh, is the voltage amplifier model. So what we're trying to find is the AV, that's this term right here, that number. We're trying to find this parameter RI, which is the input resistance. And we're trying to find this parameter R out, which is the output resistance. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and find AV. And um, it says the hint for that is to write a node equation at the uh, inputs. And if I was to write a node equation up here at the non-inverting uh, terminal, it would basically be 0 equals 0. It's telling me the current going in, uh, you know, going through Vs is 0. It's, uh, so that wouldn't really help me find the... Uh, the voltage gain, but it would help me find the input resistance, which we'll look at in a minute. So um, this uh, this blue resistor is essentially the RL from down here, and um, really this guy right here is essentially the uh, VS uh, from uh, from the one down there below. So I'll change it to blue, so you can see that that's uh, that's that part of the circuit. So here's the node equation. The node equation is essentially that the currents going into this node are, are zero. So I've got a current going right here, and that's going to be zero because it would have had to come out of the op amp, and we said the currents uh, going in or out of the op amp is zero. 
Then I'm going to add this current right here, and then this current right here. So this top current right here is it's V out minus the voltage at this node right here, which because this voltage is Vs, this voltage is also Vs right here. And if you follow the wire over, this is the same node. So this is Vs right here. So V out minus Vs is the voltage across this resistor R1. And if I divide that by the resistance R1, that's the current going down. So I, I add uh, plus zero, so I don't need to really write that but I need to write the one going up through R2. So that's plus, and we're trying to find out how much current goes up through R2, so I take and find out how much higher this end of the R2 is than the Vs node. So that would be plus 0 minus Vs over R2. And if you add all the currents uh, together there, you should get 0 by Kirchhoff's current law. And um, what we're saying is whatever current comes in one way, you know, it's going to, uh, you, can't, you can't pile up uh, charge at that node. It's going to go out somewhere else. So this is the node equation here, and we just use a little algebra to solve it. So what I'm going to do is solve for V out as a function of Vs. So if I look at this, I can, I can get V out times 1 over R1, and then... I'm going to have minus Vs times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 equals 0. And now I'm going to bring the second term over to the other side, so I'll get um, V out times 1 over R1 equals, I'm going to write it as 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 times Vs. So now I'm going to multiply top and bottom by R1 and I get over here, uh, well we'll do it over here, V out equals R1 over R1 plus R1 over R2 and that's all multiplying by Vs. And R1 over R1 here is essentially 1 so this equals 1 plus R1 over R2 times Vs. So that's V out. Now, what is AV? So notice I did this thing, um, we, you know, if it wouldn't have changed, my equation wouldn't have changed no matter what RL was. So, um, um, so this is independent of RL, and that's going to be useful for us in a minute. But, um, it essentially tells me that this output voltage right here is going to be the same as AV times VN because it didn't matter what I did to RL, this is still the, uh, the equation. So basically that says V out over VS is equal to 1 plus R1 over R2. Now, um, I also want to claim that that V out is A V I. So let's just um, look at this for a minute. So <coughs> notice that um, that there was no R L in in this equation anywhere. So um, if if I look at this model down here. If I look at this model, if I change RL, it's not supposed to change um, the output voltage. And the only way that could happen is if RO, the output resistance, was zero. Because, you see, if I made RL infinity, then there would be no, uh, no current going through RO, and so um, then uh, I would have, certainly, uh, the output voltage would be AVI. Now, if I had um, if I had RL is like a one ohm or something, then what would happen here? Well, it, 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 according to this equation right here, V out doesn't change; it stays the same right here. Doesn't matter what RL is. But in this model down here, the only way I could make that happen is if R out R, R is zero. So, so I can notice here that R out has to be equal to zero. 
um, for this uh, amplifier, which actually makes sense because the model inside the amplifier has no resistance. It's just a wire going into the amplifier, and then it has one of these dependent sources like this right here inside there and the RO is zero in that model. So that's kind of not uh, unexpected. Now, um, let's think about the, uh, the input uh, resistance. So if you notice here, on the, on the thing right here, there is zero current going in here, zero amps. And if there's zero amps going in, that essentially, I mean, no matter what I put for Vs, that means that the resistance right here has to be really big because uh, R in is equal to Vs over zero, which goes to infinity. Whenever you divide something by zero, it, uh, it gets really large. So now we have the three answers. The three answers are, um, let's just mar mark them right here. This is one answer. This right here is AV, that's another answer, and this is the third answer, RO equals zero. So that is the non-inverting amplifier, and this is a very useful amplifier, I've used it many times, and it has some very nice characteristics. It has a positive gain, notice the gain, the AV parameter is always positive because resistors are positive numbers. And uh, the, uh, the lowest uh, um, gain I could get would be 1. That would be if I picked R z R1 equals 0 and, um, and R2 equal like infinity. Or, uh, or, you know, I guess all you'd have to do is pick R1 equals 0. But if you really want to make sure, just uh, get rid of R2 and you don't have to buy one. So you might as well just have a wire going from V out back to the minus inverting terminal. And, and that would give you a gain of 1. Um, uh, but uh, <coughs> um, the other thing that's very, very important about this amplifier is the very high input resistance. This RI going to infinity is actually very important because if I were to connect this circuit with a very large RS uh, to my amplifier, the voltage across the input Vn would equal Vs. It doesn't matter what the RS is, even if the RS was like 10 megohms. So uh, that is a very nice thing. It won't load down what you connect it to. It's like, uh, would be a useful um, uh, thing to put, say, on the input of a, uh, a multimeter that's measuring voltage. So, uh, you know, when you connect your multimeter to uh, some place, some circuit, you don't want the, the voltage to change when you hook your meter up. Well, this circuit would be a very nice uh, way to keep that from happening. And, uh, you know, I've seen... Uh, meters that do that. Okay, so now let's look at the second um, example. We'd like to do the same thing, find the same parameters for this uh, amplifier right here. And it's essentially, that looks exactly like this amplifier up here. The only difference is, on this amplifier, I'm feeding it right here on the, on the non-inverting input. On this amplifier, I, I stuck the source right here in between the ground and R2. So um, what I'm saying is that this part of the circuit right here is the source. We could turn that blue because it's the source. And we could put a load resistor on here because, uh, you know, oh, maybe I'll just copy it from up here. It might be faster. So I'm just going to copy this thing right here. Copy. And I'll paste it down here. I'm going to paste. I'll just hook it onto the end here. Uh, I'll give it a little more room, uh, about like that. And uh, we'll just uh, like hook it up here. So there's the load resistor, and um, there's the source resistor. So essentially, instead of feeding it here, hooking my input voltage here, I hooked my input voltage right here. So I just uh, swapped where I was putting the input. So um, if we look at this thing, um, we would probably expect that the output resistance would be zero because we're hooked right directly to this output of the op amp. We can check that by writing our node equation at this point right here, just like before. 
uh, circle there, or try to, so that node right there. And, um, and we'll get an equation that only depends on V out and Vs. It doesn't matter what RL is. So let's, let's just do that. First of all, this voltage right here is zero volts. By the summing point constraint, that makes this voltage here zero volts, which means this voltage is zero volts. And uh, this voltage, of course, is at Vs. And this voltage right here is at V out. So there's zero current flowing out here because it comes right out of the input of the op amp. So I'll put zero amps there. And just like before, there's a current coming down here and a current going up there. So we need to write the node equation here. So we're summing the currents into that node. So I'll say zero, that's from the left. Plus, I'm going to get the current going down right here. So using Ohm's law, that's the difference in voltages across R1, which is V out minus zero divided by R1. And now I'm going to get this voltage, I mean this current right here. I want that current right there. And so that's going to be Vs minus zero, because I've got zero at the node I'm doing this node uh, equation at, divided by the resistance between them, which is R2. And I've got the three terms there. If you add those three currents up, you've got to get zero. So now I have one equation that has only Vs and V out in it and no RLs. Well, because it doesn't have any RL, that means that the output resistance is zero, just like before. So let's use a little algebra here and solve this. So I've got V out over R1, and I'm going to bring this other term, this second term, I'm going to bring it to the other side. So that's going to be equals, and now it's going to be negative 1 over R2 times Vs. And now if I just multiply both sides by R1, I get V out equals minus R1 over R1 plus, um, no, I just, uh, minus R1, R, R, it's, uh, what is it? It's minus R1 over R2 times Vs. And that uh, is the uh, equation that gives us the gain. And because it, this does not depend on uh, the load resistor at all, the gain is this number right here. This is AV in this case. And AV then is equal to minus R1 over R2. And notice this negative sign. That means it turns the signal in. If you put a sine wave in right here for this uh, little VS, you will get an upside down sine wave somewhat bigger over here, assuming that R1 is bigger than R2. So this is a one equation, one answer right there. And uh, we said that um, RO was equal to zero. The output resistance is equal to zero because this didn't depend on the load. Now what we need to do is we need to find the input resistance. So if we go back up here and look at this circuit right here, the input resistance is just using Ohm's law. It's going to be this VI right here divided by whatever current goes in there, um, you know, into this thing. That would be the current right here. I'd call this II. So RI is just going to be, it's defined as VI divided by ii when you use those uh, those um, conventions there. So let's just do that, uh, find out what that is here. So we have vi, vi is going to be this voltage right here, so this is vi, and this is ii, this uh, current right here, that guy is ii. So um, if I look at, this voltage is zero. So I can say that ii is going to equal Vs, which is Vi. I'm just going to, I mean, I guess I could call it Vi. So it's going to be, it's going to be Vi divided by uh, minus zero divided by R2. So that says Vi over Ii is equal to R2. And so this is equal to so R in is equal to this Vi over Ii, and that's equal to R2. So that's uh, the last answer here. So this is actually also a very useful circuit. 
and uh, sometimes we modify this circuit by adding some more resistors and voltage sources on here uh, like this R2 and the VS and it becomes a summing amplifier and uh, you can also take this amplifier right here and put it together with this amplifier up here, the inverting and the non-inverting, and have two voltage inputs. And then you can get a, a differential amplifier. And I'll do a movie about that um, in, the, in the near future here. I hope this was helpful.